Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special author in the room today. She is an amazing author, and she is has a book out that she's going to tell you a little about that you're going to love. She focuses on how to feel happy and how to bring joy into your life, and she has lots of tools and techniques in her book that show you how to bring happiness into your life. And today, we're going to talk about that because there's a lot of people out there who want to feel happy, who want to feel joy in their life, and they're at points in their life where they may feel stuck, things are happening, and they're not feeling the way they want to feel. Well, she's here today. and She's going to talk about ways you could bring happiness into your life and how you can turn your life around so you could feel that joy that you deserve. Elizabeth, it is a pleasure and an honor to have you on the show. Can you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Yes, oh, Stacey, thanks for having me, firstly. And um Yes, um, I'm I'm living in Sydney, Australia, and I um, went through a, a challenging divorce uh, about seven, seven, eight years ago, and um, with that, I it was it was so challenging in that I felt like I'd just lost me, you know, because I had you know I had four adult children and and a shock to divorce where that I wasn't expecting. And right. all of us was just sort of, what, what happens now? I mean, you know, I, I totally invested my time and into my relationship and my kids. And yeah. now they were all adults and I was in a, a, a bad way. I was in a lot of shock and I was um, kept spiraling down into deep depression and, you know, had all, all the emotions, you know, roller coaster of emotions. And so... I really started, I was determined. I think I had a determination to, to um, pick myself up, thankfully. Mm -hmm. And um, But I was looking everywhere for a manual. I was looking everywhere for a manual. There must be a manual about how to, how to navigate this because it was, I, it was unexpected and um, I just needed some signposts to get yeah. me um, in, a, in a better place. And so that's when I started... Um, journaling and thankfully I started painting about the same time uh, encouraged by my children who'd given me a, a voucher for a free painting class and um, and then as, as I started to um, journal and paint I realized that I was developing tools to help me feel better and um, coupled with um, lots of different modalities, which I explored over that time from, you know, living, living away in ashrams um, to um, going heavily into Kundalini yoga to um, all, all, all different, a lot of different modalities. I started to, to um, work out what was working and what was not. And yes. um my book together so yeah so published my first book last last October free and first unlocking your ultimate life and um with with just simple tools and techniques to help people feel good if they're being challenged which we all are in some you know in some area um yeah. whether it's you know financial or um, relationship based or health based yeah, so that's and so I'm just enjoying doing podcasts and helping people um, feel better. Yeah. I love it. You know, there's so many people out there that, you know, they go through so much in life, you know, and they are struggling to overcome the trauma that they've experienced in life. And they don't know how to get through those negative emotions that are locked inside of them. And so many people want to feel happy. They want to be happy. They want to feel that joy when they wake up in the morning. They want to have a reason, a cause to go out and feel, you know, and, and ignition or you know a, a feeling of of you know energy and they can't you know so you know you have many tools you know tell us a little about some of the th advice that you can give people just when you were talking there Stacey I, I think it, if I had to sort of put my number one point for because you're right everyone wants to feel better and there's no doubt about that all around the world you know what's your magic wish I want to feel better I want to feel good Everyone in the world wants to feel good. And I think the biggest stumbling block I find is that we, we, 
we rush around, we're too busy, we don't give ourselves time out of the light, off the life hamster wheel. Yes. We need to take time to stop whatever we're doing, whether it's the partying, whether it's the busy with the work, busy with the children, whatever we're busy doing, we, we you know, as Eckhart Tolle, you know, one of my um, teachers says, you know, we're, we're human beings, we're not human doings. And the human part of us, yes, we have our personality, we have our, you know, our life situation and, and everything that, you know, is part and parcel to, to being on this planet. But we yeah. also, the being part of us, and if if that is not looked after, I think that that's when we can get lost in our mind with all our thoughts and um, we can delve into the past and shame and blame and and um, regret um, and it doesn't make us feel good. It just, it, it just makes us feel worse. And yeah. then we can... Our mind can play tricks on us too with our future and we can yeah. fatalize with our future and we can be kept up all night with these fantasy thoughts of how bad my future is going to look. But the reality is if you could, what I found for me is that when I was feeling so bad, I had lost myself in my thoughts and I was in the past or in the future. So the first thing I do is bring myself back into the now. And I couldn't do that unless I could take a breather from my doing, my yes. busyness. I was running around driving the car with the children or, you know, busy at work or busy partying. I wasn't feeling the, the now. I wasn't in the now. I, I wasn't yeah. fully present. And so I'd always bring myself fully back into the now and I would immediately feel a sense of you know more of peace because you know I, I think well I'm safe I'm not not going to be you know I'm safe I've, I've got a meal on the table and right. um right now I'm not going to let my thoughts get carried away in my thoughts yeah and that, that really helped ground me and align me with feeling more peaceful yeah I love I think that's one of the things people, you know, tend to not do is, is they don't give themselves enough of time to renew themselves and they need to prioritize, I, I believe, their time because all you need is a certain amount of time a day just to give yourself a time to renew, whether it be exercise or whether it be meditation or a walk, you know, outside and just, you know, observe in nature. We need time to renew ourselves. We need time to even sleep. And I think a lot of people, they get so absorbed in their life and what's going on now, especially people who are struggling with certain issues, you know, whether it be work or whether it be at home and pers their personal lives, you know, they get so absorbed that they forget about the number one person themselves. How do you feel about that? Yes, no, I, I really think that's right. I mean, my book, you know, Free and First, it's actually about putting yourself first. And I can probably hear your, your um, listeners and your viewers going, no, I can't put myself first. I've got this and I've got that. And, but, and, or it feels selfish because, you know, a lot of people think oh, that's, you know, that's being very selfish, putting myself first. But if yeah. in essence, we, if we put ourselves first, we lift our mood and mm -hmm. then everybody, children, our, our relatives, they all benefit from that. They all feel better as well. And so what better gift in, in, in a simple by putting yourself first following your joy for 10 minutes a day playing like a child whatever it is if it's a putting a, a song on the on the radio and having a bit of a dance but yeah. just not getting so serious with your life if, if you can just shock yourself and do something silly that you know doesn't hurt you or anyone else but mm -hmm. that that's the vibe and then when you when you're talking or thinking about your friends or thinking about your children or your parents they get your good vibes yes. and your good vibes rather than oh I'm in my my not so good vibes and then yeah. your kids and well unfortunately they're they're often pulled down as well which you know so if you can't put yourself first because you think it's selfish do it for your children do it for your right. friends and do it for your your parents um if that's easier to think of it that way. 
No, I love that. You know, I, I think one of the main things is you hear it so many times, you hear it with women and mothers, or you hear it even with adults, you know, males won't say it, but you could tell they feel shameful. They feel, you know, they 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 feel a sense, like you said, a guilt, you know, if they put others, you know, if they put themselves before others. And really, you know, that's the, if you can't help yourself, then how can you help others? And people have to really realize they have to really give themselves some type of self-love or self-care you know how do you feel about that yes yes I mean you know like I think Oprah sort of says you know about all you know we have to love ourselves first you know have our self-watering system of self-love yeah. happening big time because you know life's I think it's a mirror you know if we don't love and respect ourselves well we may not be loved and respected by others you know, right. big, really big correlation, I feel. So yeah. the first thing, first, really early on in my book, I say the importance of, um, of um, self-nurture, spending some time working out what your needs are and making sure not looking for, you know, your partner or your, or your parents or your friends to help meet your needs, but actually working out what you what you're missing what needs you're missing and taking steps speaking up to to putting boundaries in place so you, your needs are met and right. and you know the you know the abc of me which is a tool that i mentioned in my book is the a a is we can't do a before c That's yeah primary school teacher in me is talking but we a the acknowledge allow and accept how we feel is the a and we have to do that first acknowledge allow and accept how we feel and then why do we do that because then we can work out our needs and mm -hmm. then we can meet the boundaries and then but the boundaries it depends on how we communicate which is the c communication of the boundaries and so the ABC of me is a really important tool that that if we can follow through with that uh, when we when we feel when we don't feel good and we can actually stop and feel how we feel yeah. and work out what our needs are put up our boundaries in place well then we start to free ourselves up because right. we're not locked into oh you know I'm feeling you know, we, a lot of people don't let it themselves feel, you know, like we're so busy, you know, we can yeah. get lost in busyness and then they don't even meet A. You know, that's the right. problem. You know, if I had to say the problem is we're not off, we don't get off the life hamster wheel enough to feel our feelings. Yeah. And we really need to feel our feelings first. And a lot of people don't want to feel their uncomfortable feelings and I, me included. I mean, who wants to feel their uncomfortable feelings? That's a bit, you know dire i mean why can't we just keep busy can't we just keep busy with getting lost in our children or our work or our partying or our shopping or or whatever it is we get lost in but yeah. it doesn't solve the problem because i feel as a lot of writers and um that we the 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 feelings get contained within us and as the doctors oh, yeah. are cautioning on to those restrained uh, emotions kept within our psyche or within our body can cause health issues. So I think it's really vital that we slow down, find time to stop, feel how we're feeling and, and have enough self-love to go, hang on, um, mm. I'm, this matters to me and I'm going to speak up about it and I'm going to put a boundary in place and follow through with it, communicate it and free myself up, free myself up for um, feeling good. You know, right. I think it's, you know, it's we, we have to take responsibility. I, I, I believe that every person needs to take responsibility for this and um, they can't keep waiting. Oh, when, you know, like I think, I think a few writers talk about the waiting, you know, when I, when I retire, I'll be happy. Or, or when my when my perfect boyfriend comes along, I'll be happy then. Or, yeah. or when, when I get my new car or when I go on my holiday. Um, 
but I think the thing is we're, we're actually saying that we're actually saying no to the now we're saying no wow. present and we have to be really I believe we, we that's the only thing we've got power over is the now right and, you know to get something happening we have to sort of implement it now you know we have to feel what we need and yeah. go hey, well I'm I'm taking the reins of my life and and my mind's not going to be the master anymore. You know, all, my, all that noise in my head about all the, no, you can't do that sort of thing. Um, right. All the activity that I'm just going to sort of go, not going to listen anymore to that. And that's yeah. what I decided. I decided, no, I'm going to be the leader of my life and um, the master of my mind. And I really got determined not to listen to, to the, any negativity as to why I couldn't do something or um, anything that would hold me back from um, finding joy and finding peace for me because I think everyone deserves peace. Everyone, every, everyone on this planet, you know, including the animals, every, every sentient being deserves, you know, joy and peace. And, and I really believe that it, it, it it, it, it comes from within, you know, we have to yeah. stop, feel how we feel, feel our inner being, you know, we're, we're, we're not human doings, we're human beings. And I really feel when we can spend just, even if we set our, our phones to just, you know, t 10 minutes every couple of hours to go, okay, oh, I have to go and feel how I feel and just, just breathe, you know, close my eyes and just just do some little breathing exercises. It's just amazing how you can feel so much more peaceful and still as very alert and um and you know with more you know when it sort of steps up to more meditation, well then yeah. you know, intuition's improving and you and you get so many health benefits which I could talk all day about and I know <laughs> you may, so I I, I won't you know, but, you know, meditation is, is a big part of my life and um, I wouldn't go a day without meditation because it's just, it, it, it powers me up. It's a bit like charging my mobile phone. I'm not going to forget that and I'm not going to forget my meditation. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I like what you said about really getting rid of, you know, the, the negativity. You want to be around positive people. You want to be around people that are going to encourage you to be a better person, to encourage you to be happy, to encourage you to follow your dream. You don't, you know, if you're around negative people and you're around people who discourage you, you know, that's going to pull you down. And a lot of times you find that a lot of people who are having trouble being happy and experiencing joy are, are surrounded by people who are actually pulling them down, giving you know implementing negative thoughts into their head like why are you doing that oh you, you that's a waste of time oh it's not going to work you know you know it makes no sense what you're doing you know you got to stop that you know and, and you know people when they they're around negative energy and they're around people who are always thinking the worst of the worst is going to happen you know how can you grow you feel like a vacuum like all the energy is getting sucked out of you you know and and i think believe you know in order to grow we need to surround ourselves by positive people that have positive dreams that want to be better, you know, than they are already. And they're looking for people that are higher than themselves so they could get and elevate to those levels. You know, what's your intake on that? Yes. Well, I, I sometimes go talk about um, casually surfing, surfing, surfing in the wave. You know, you want to, you want to hang around the, 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 the people on a higher vibe because it's much better to, to catch onto their wave, onto onto their higher vibe, than than if we're always around um, um, very depressed or um, people who are always looking at the worst side of things. Well, of course we 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 go down. We we and and what I what is paramount is that our state of consciousness or our vibe dictates how every situation unfolds in our life yes. so I realized that is I, I sort of had that aha moment myself when I was um, negotiating the, the divorce settlement and I thought well okay if if I can get my vibe 
as high as we can through, you know, through being eating healthily, uh, exercising, being around positive people and just ticking as many boxes as I could to, 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 to get my vibe higher would mean yeah. that go in to negotiate, uh, um, you know, the deal, the biggest, biggest deal of my life, you know, when you sort of, you know, you've got your kids and you're trying to work, you know, you want to be able to think clearly and you, of course, you want the most positive outcome. So yes. with, with anything in life, what I've realised is the higher we can, we, can, we can climb our vibe up by ticking as many boxes as we can, we're, yes. we're you know, in a much better position. And then also are our, our children and our friends as we, we emanate a higher vibe and they can catch the wave, so to speak. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Now in your book, you have like different exercises and things, you know, you've mentioned some already, you know, how can people, you know, if they're feeling their emotions are repressed and they're starting, you know, and they're going through, they're not feeling that happiness. They're not feeling that joy. And as we know that when you have, when you push your feelings down and your feelings are repressed after a while, you can go numb. And you don't even know how you feel anymore because you pushed your emotions down for so long. And if you're around people who are negative and you're, all these things are happening, you know, what are some of the things that you suggest for people, you know, who want to feel happiness, who want to feel joy, you know, what, you know, you've mentioned a few already, but what are some powerful, you know, points that you think people could use to change their lives around? Yes, well, Stacey, I think it depends exactly how, uh, you know, each, each person's going to be different, of course, to what to ha what degree their pain is, their trauma is, where it's at, as to yeah. as tools are appropriate for them. And I must say here, I am not a health professional here, so please don't change any of your um, health re regimes because I'm, I'm just speaking from experience what worked for me um, through a traumatic event. So in the early days, um, just finding my fun, that's all I could manage just to, just to look for um, not trying to bite off more than I could chew and just to get through the next half hour, get through the next hour. And I'd have a list near the, on, the, on the kitchen um, bridge or near, near, near my toothbrush about mm -hmm. ways to bump me out of, of my mood that would be very low. So whether that was call a friend, put the radio on. Um, so that was the, the, that's sort of the critical list. I'd have my critical list close at hand. Um, yeah. and then as I started to um, want other tools, um, I explored other um tools which which was then um um the the idea of being present um and letting go of allowing ourselves to be present and to feel into our feelings mm -hmm. meant that it allow the heavy emotions that hold us down like you know you can imagine a hot air balloon everyone's got his idea of a hot air balloon you've got the sacks yeah. of sand big bags of sand holding you down so I'd go I really want to let go of my grudges with my you know husband or with my employer or whoever whoever the person is that you may subconsciously sometimes be harboring a grudge against your parents you know yeah. it, there's many, and when we can look at at um, forgiveness, uh, even if we have to fake it until we make it, yeah. when we can look at forgiveness, it lightens our load. And guess what? We we get to rise up. We get to feel good. It, it, you know, non non forgiveness causes more havoc, I believe, with our physical health than the person we're not forgiving. You know, mm -hmm. we can do ourselves more health harm, uh, you know, more harm to our health than. So it's 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 better just to to um forgive, uh, you know, for for your sake, because you know it doesn't mean we need to condone what they've done. Right. But, but, you know, like I think it, you know, I think it was 
I think it was Jesus on the cross said, forgive them because they don't know, they know not, meaning that they may not be at that level of understanding to know that they've done anything wrong. So you could be you could be banging your head against the wall trying to trying to get through to people um, that have that you think have wronged you, but you're never going to win because if they're at that consciousness that they don't understand that yeah. what caused you pain, well, you you're not going to um, get very far. So, nice. um, so I, I find that forgiveness for me, you know, forgiving and just accepting where people are at, you know, we're all at different stages on the rocky road called, you know, um, the journey through life. You know, everyone's trying their best. Every, mm -hmm. every, I, I really believe every person is trying their best. Um, yes. From the consciousness at the, at the level of understanding that they're in, on this planet with and, um, and, the the shame and the blame you know pointing the finger at someone else is going to do you more harm um and it's not going to help you feel better and long term it could be play havoc with your health right exactly so true now what inspired you to write your book yes well i i just didn't want any of my my children or my friends to go through what i went through i i I was just determined. My I've always enjoyed helping people, uplifting others, enriching others' lives through whatever you know. I'm a primary, I'm a trained primary school teacher, um, and I worked, uh, did voluntary work for the Race Foundation, helping children from challenged homes mm -hmm. as as a mentor. Um, and I just always enjoyed it, and so. Um, when something's working for me, I just really love to share it um, to help everyone feel better. You know, like in this challenging world that we're in, um, I've just really wanted to, you know, I hold the vision my book will be translated into different languages so as we can help people around the world to be yeah. in a better place because there's, there's a lot of suffering going on and I really hold the vision that, we can dissolve the suffering with tools and techniques and really um, it starts with each individual person to make this world a, a, a better place. Mm. Oh, hundred percent, a hundred percent. And each, if each individual can acknowledge that and, and, and just put a, a, a small effort of, of kindness, hope, gratitude, love into the world, the, the world could change so dramatically and, that's all we need. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be, you know, like I think, you know, a lot of people think, oh, well, I can't do that. I mean, I can't write a book or I can't do it. It's just baby, baby steps, you know, like just even smiling at the the the, the, the lady who serves you coffee every morning. Yeah. That, that will uplift someone, you know, like if we can just take baby steps to bring more joy to the people that we meet during our day. Yeah. Huge. I mean, if everyone just woke up and said okay well we're going to do that tomorrow I'm yeah. just going to um everyone I meet I'm just going to smile at yeah well, it, it would, it, I think it would change the whole flavor of the world quite quickly right but, you know yeah oh 100 percent 100 percent now where can people find your book yes yeah, so the, the best the best way is just to jump on my website so it's Elizabeth Jane dot com but then i have dot au for australia so it's elizabethjane dot com dot au and you can um go down and um, join on my facebook or my instagram and uh, listen to all the podcasts that i do around the world and interviews within australia and overseas um, about how to how to feel good fast because you know life's too short you know life's too short not to sort of take it on you know take life on at a, a a better angle than what a lot of people are um you know suffering at the moment a hundred percent now um if we had to take everything that you talked about today and you wanted to give a emphasize on a, a couple of important factors what are some things you'd like to emphasize about today's conversation well well peace well well peace starts with each 
each individual person and we I mean I don't want to scare people but we're responsible for for everything in you know like if we can play our part just with baby steps about getting our internal landscape happening then it will it will be reflected we'll see the world through different eyes yes Once we lift our vibe once each person lifts their vibe, the world will unfold at a much more peaceful, more joyous, more abundant, in a more abundant way. Yes. And so everyone can start today to, to really look at what's working and what's not, to change whether that's okay keep it simple what's working what's not 10 things not working okay let's just drop these 10 things and 10 things that are working continue with them you know right. look at your group of friends as you said look at your group of friends are there any that i need to sort of like you know defriend or whatever we do with the social media is yes. it, it just simple steps just if everyone can lift up into a higher vibe, the world will start to reflect that. Right. It starts with each person playing their part. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Now you said you have some um, things that you're working on in the future. What are some of those things that you plan on doing in the future? Yes. Well, I'm, I'm really excited because Stacey, because um, I have got uh, two children's books on, on, on my way, which I'm illustrating. So one is is animating um, um, Australian animals and mm. uh, with sort of um, talking about uplifting children, to teaching how to, kids can be empowered as well to be able to step into their full full superpowers. Mm. Um, and, and so it's not so, I thought, well, when the, the parents are reading the children's books that will help the parents as well because we can yeah. all we all should be up to step into our superpowers and um our authenticity and to to um so the kids books i'm doing and also um i hope very soon to one day have wellness centers around the world to to help people um uplift into a better place to help them through their traumatic challenges that they're faced with in, no matter what um in, in what um way they have what's the word in, in what what type of challenge they have you know whether it's financial or relationship based or health based um right. we've all got challenges but you know they're all in different packages but they're yeah. universal and you know everyone around the world have have got the same challenges on at the moment. Oh, hundred percent. We're not alone. <laughs> yeah. well, this has been amazing. I I really thank you so much for coming on this show and sharing all your information and sharing about your book and 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 the principles and the tools that are in those books. And I think it's so important, you know, that people, you know, really focus on trying to be happy and trying to reach their utmost joy in their lives. It's so important, you know, we live on this planet and the life we have, we should really not waste it away and and not, you know, and not feel miserable inside and 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 have to live each life just dragging your feet we should try to work toward being happy and and live in a joyful life and when you have happiness and joy in your life you know good health and good mentality comes with it and uh you know if, if there was one thing you had to say before we go you know what would be that one little piece of advice that you would want to share with people on how to be happy and really be able to you know live your most joyous fulfilling life you know if you had to give that one little piece of advice what comes to your mind um well it would be to put yourself first i've said it now to put yourself first and not to keep making excuses about um, why you can't because as as you lift up then you, your your friends your family your parents your colleagues they'll all lift up if you if you put yourself last you're down in the dumps 
Well, you're thinking of them and you're you're giving them your your not so good vibes. So right. I would say put yourself first. It's selfing. It's not selfish. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Elizabeth, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I hope you'll come back. This has been an amazing experience and it's a topic that people are very interested in listening to. And, you know, you gave such great advice. So I thank you so much for your time. And I really appreciate you. Yes, I'd love to come back at any stage, Stacey. You're, you're, it's been wonderful. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. And you have a great day. Thank you. You too.